Hello, today's Bible study comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, and reads as follows. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners in Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. All he has come here with, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. When I, Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Amen? Well, this is about the conversion of Saul. And Saul was one of the biggest instruments that the Lord used. Um, and if you remember, if you saw, if, you, if you're reading, um, Saul was there when Stephen got stoned and his cloth came upon him, his coat came upon him. Um, and then you remember Saul, he had made havoc on the church when he entered the house and would drag men and women out and committing them to prison. Saul was pretty much a terrorist in his own right. Um, but, um, as he was continuing his work, he was on the road to Damascus, going to the city of Damascus. Um, and... He had an encounter. Um, and he was still, you know, this was his thing. He was still talking about threats to and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Now, that means he was killing God's people. And he was angry and violent. And he was convicted to his, his self-righteousness, uh, his way of doing things. And he didn't care for the disciples of the Lord at all. And Jesus had to come intervene. And he was not seeking Jesus when Jesus came to him. Remember that because he was not seeking Jesus when Jesus came to him. Um, so when you think of that, you're saying, well, the Lord had to intervene in the situation where even though he wasn't being seeked out, he was going to use them, one. Two, you were fighting against the Lord, and you think there might not be a response. Trust me, there will be, and Jesus shows you. And three, most importantly, God can use anybody doing anything if he wills it to be. And this was a situation where the Lord came in when Saul wasn't looking for him. 
So Saul was going towards the road and bing, bam, boom. He gets uh, on the road and as he neared Damascus on his journey, a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground and he heard a voice speaking to him. Now, and as this light shone around him and he heard this voice, things started happening. This voice spoke to him. And to think that the Lord normally would come up and confront somebody who wasn't looking for him, this isn't a normal thing where God just walks up and normally can front the center. This was big. And he spoke to him. So this was a sinner the Lord was going to because this sin was persecuting the church, the young church. And this was at a midday time. Paul tells you that later on in the Bible, in the book of Acts, but it happened about noon. And the sun, the sun was up and everything. He tells you that. And he says this light, though, was brighter than the sun. If you look in Acts 26 and 13, so he fell to the ground. And what would his reaction be? I, I don't know if the horse bucked him or whatever it may have been, but he fell to the ground. And it wasn't to give him praise and to revere him. In my mind, he was trying to figure out how do I get over this situation? Because this light smacked me. I don't know where it came from. A voice is speaking to me. How do I handle how do I get out of this situation? In other words, he was trying to make it, survive. And but yet he The funny thing here is he was going to Damascus, but we always think that he was on a horse or something, because I even thought he fell off of a horse, but it doesn't say he fell from a horse that he rode. And I was looking through the whole thing. It, I just didn't see where it said there was something that he was riding. And it could be that he rode, but it's not specific. So however he fell, he fell to the ground. But he heard the voice saying to him, and the voice is speaking to him, and the voice is telling him, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. He replied, because Saul asked, who are you? And he told him, I'm the one you're going around persecuting. You are killing my disciples. And he said to him, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So this was an order from Jesus. So he tells him, you got something to do. And, and remember, Jesus has said this to him. He said, Saul, Saul, and I, I go past this part. But when he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? This was heavy emotion on him. This was a hard thing on him. Why would you do this? So when you think about the emotions that were involved in this, the, the, the question of why are you doing this? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what to do, what you must do. Not what to do, what you must do. Do so. This is an order, command. Things is getting ready to change. So the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They didn't know what to say, and it didn't say they heard their voice. They said they heard the sound, but not did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see. He could before, but he couldn't now. So he had to get some assistance to go into Damascus. And for three days, he was blind. And for three days, he did not eat or drink. Mm. And 
this was itself something that was hard because Saul was going around. He was persecuting people. He could see he was a strong man in his zeal to do what he did, and he had to be physically somewhat intimidating. But now he couldn't see. He had no sight. So I I looked at and the Lord is saying, if you couldn't see the things that I've done and the things that I continue to do, let me take your sight from you until I can show you who I truly am. And he sets it up. So you see where he shuts his eyes and then he was led through by his friends and the men with them and then for three days without sight neither ate nor drank I think Saul was just terrified scared I mean his vision was gone he heard this voice from the Lord he was going to persecute the Lord's people how much worse could it get and all he could probably do was sit there in his blind silence agonizing over what he had done, what's about to happen, because everything changed. He is no longer able to do the things he was doing. And it had to humble the dude. It had to, it had to make him think about what he had been doing. Was I doing the right thing? If I was doing this in Jesus came and spoke to me, and he's the one now confronting me. Was I doing the right thing? And when you look at this weakness, Saul was having all these issues because everything about him was changing, going away, dying, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, he, he needed to have a change and he was going through his change in these three days because his ways weren't the right ways and Jesus was going to bring him back he was going to bring him back but he was going to bring him back in his way and that's how Ananias gets to step in and you got to look into Ananias because it says in Damascus there was a, a disciple named Ananias the Lord called him in a vision, Ananias. So the Lord came to Ananias, his disciple, in a vision. And Ananias answered, yes, Lord. And the Lord told him, the Lord told him to do something. And Ananias wasn't happy with this. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street, specifically this Judas, and he's on Straight Street. There's Judases throughout the Bible, but this one specifically is on Straight Street, and asked for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And in the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. Saul saw Ananias also come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So the Lord went to both parties. Now, Paul's going to get rewarded, but Ananias does get rewarded, even though he got a problem with the situation. Because he, he said, Lord, Ananias answered. He says, man, I done heard about this dude. And he's a beast at getting folks. He says, all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem, I'm a holy people. I, I don't want to mess with him. And he has come with authority. Uh-oh. He came with earthly authority to come get me, Father. Forgetting that God has all authority, but he says he comes with earthly authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. There's only one high priest. There's only one with the true authority, but Ananias knows the physical part that's been happening. So Ananias is about to get rewarded. And he got to be obedient. He got some questions. He got some some problems with this situation. Because, hey, I know this dude killing folk. Putting them in prison. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. It was a stern go. 
He tells them, this man, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And you know, that would have been hard. You've been killing folk. You've been doing this and that. But the Lord has plans that we don't know about. And when you look at Paul's life, there was no reason as a youth, when you look at his education, that you wouldn't have selected him. You knew he was a worker because Paul was going crazy doing a job he did. And all Paul needed, Saul needed, was to be converted. And he got that humbling. He was resurrected in those three days because he had to change. He had to die as Saul the killer, uh, Saul the zealous hunter of disciples to Paul. And, and although he was still Saul and changed his name to Paul, the thing is, He's going to go out and be just as hungry building the kingdom. Uh-oh, so, uh -oh, so I'm listening to this. I'm seeing this. And the Lord told Ananias to go. Now I get a little more why the Lord said it. And then he spoke all these languages, and he was intelligent, and he was a traveler, and he could travel all around. And the Lord told him, you may not know this. I know these things. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. I need somebody to speak to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And this is him. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And we all suffer for the Lord's name. But Paul was being told, you will suffer as we all do. So, as Paul is waiting on Ananias, and as Ananias is going through his own personal problems, because, hey, these were some problems for him to go to this dude, this frightening man, and he was frightening to him. He had to be. And he, to know the mission of Saul and everything he had done, he he had a right. He had a right to be scared. But out of all these things, he is my chosen vessel. And the fact that he will suffer, this was an addition to his calling to the Lord. See, you we, we forget that his suffering in his suffering, Paul was also very privileged. Um, and he would leave that life of privilege. This, that life was going to be behind him because the Lord, the God Almighty, had called him to something more than that privilege. But this call that was more, because Paul had a great life, but this higher call that he called Paul to, it was going to have much suffering with it. So he left privilege to go suffer. So Ananias is obedient, although hesitant. <laughs> I don't think he wasn't, although hesitant. Then Ananias sent, went to the house and entered it. And he placed his hands on Saul and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, so Saul was being told that Ananias knew what had occurred. And, and this is a confirmation for Saul knowing that Ananias was sent from the Lord because they both had visions. So Ananias knew he sent me. I'm the one that you saw in your vision. Although he didn't tell Paul that and although Paul didn't know, Paul didn't tell that. He sent me so that you may see again. Uh-oh. He sent me so you can physically see again. But the real sight that you are now seeing is the right sight of doing the work of the Lord. Because you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit also. And immediately, 
Not long, not later, but immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. And when they say he could see again, he couldn't only see physically. He could see the way of the Lord. And what did he do when he saw that? Because he accepted it. He accepted him. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some of this food, because he hadn't eaten for three days, he regained his strength. Amen.